So we have learned about square roots, square numbers, and perfect squares. In this video tutorial, let's start our discussion on perfect cubes or cube numbers. So here we have a number 4. We have the number 4. And this 4 can be written as 2 times 2. That is 2 squared. So 4 is a square number. And this number 8 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2. That is 2 cubed. 2 raised to the power of 3. Right? It means that 8 is a cube number or a perfect cube. This is a perfect square. This is a perfect cube. Similarly, 9 can be written as 3 times 3 is equal to 3 squared and 27 can be written as 3 times 3 times 3 is equal to 3 cubed. So this is 3 squared that makes it a perfect square. This is 3 cubed that makes 27 a perfect cube. This is 16. 4 times 4, 4 is squared that is 16 is a perfect square. Whereas 64 can be written as 4 times 4 times 4, that is 4 cube. It means that 64 is a perfect cube. So you can check with certain, uh, I mean, uh, other numbers as well, and you'll find the same trend. So if you have a number, natural number A, that can be written as B times B times B, that is B cubed, where B is also a natural number then this a is a perfect cube or a square number or a uh, cube number perfect cube or a cube number okay now we have an interesting interesting point here there are only 10 cube numbers from 1 to 1000. <clears throat> if you take this number 1, from number 1 to number 10, and then find their perfect cubes. So the perfect cube of 1 is 1, then you have 8, then 27, of 4 is 64, 125, 216, 343, 512, 729, and then you have 1000, that is perfect cube of 10. It means that you have here, perfect cubes starting from 1 to 1000 from 1 to 1000 <clears throat> this one is a perfect cube of 1 and this 1000 is a perfect cube of 10 it means that <clears throat> you have only 10 perfect cubes between 1 from 1 to 1000 right this is an interesting point Perfect cubes of numbers ending in. Okay, we have to check a trend here. <clears throat> Let's say that first we'll discuss for perfect cubes of numbers ending in zero. Ending in zero. Okay. So suppose you have some number, right? You have some number and that ends in zero. So <clears throat> If you have to find out it, its perfect cube, then you'll multiply, <coughs> excuse me, the same number with, I mean, we have to multiply this number two times, right? This is zero, this is zero, the same number. Then you'll get a number, since you, when you will multiply it, it is zero times zero, right? This zero is at the ones place and it's also at the ones place, the same number. So you'll get zero here and then you'll get some number here. We are not concerned about this one. We have to only check with what digit your perfect cube will end if your number ends in 0. So you'll get 0 here. Now since you have to find the perfect cube, you'll again multiply the same number to this one, right? Because it's a is equal to b times b times b. So you have done b times b, now again times b. So again multiply this number with this 0, right? So what do you get? You'll get again 0 times 0. And here you'll get some number that we are not, some digits that we are not concerned about. What does it tell us? It tells us that if your number ends in 0, if your number ends in 0, and when you try to find out its cube, that is a is equal to b times b times b, 
the final number will also end in the digit zero. Okay, so this is a trend. So if your number ends in zero, its perfect cube will also end in zero. Okay, now check what if your number ends in one. So you have to find a perfect cube. So let's say that you have this number. This ends in one. You will multiply the same number. So what you get? You get one times one and here you will get some digits. We are not concerned about that one. And then again you will multiply this number to this product that you get from these two, from the multiplication of these two. So this number. So what's one times one? One times one means that you'll get again one and then the product will have some digits on the other at the other places, not concerned about that. It means that if you find the perfect cube of a number that of the numbers that end in one, you'll have one at its units place or your perfect cube will end in one. So if your number ends in one, its perfect cube will also end in one. Okay. Now, suppose your number ends in two. So if your number ends in two and you have to find a perfect cube of it, so two is at the units place times then the same number, you'll multiply with the same number. Here you get two times two that is four. And then you'll have some other digits here. The product will have some other digits here, not concerned about that one. Then you'll again multiply one more time with the same number because you have to find the cube. So this two here. So what do we get? We get now eight and some other digits in the product. Now, it means that when your number ends in two, that is it has two at its units place, it means that the perfect cube will end in 8. So if it is 2, your perfect cube will end in 8. Okay. Let's do for 3. What if your number ends in 3? So this is 3 that is at a unit space and the same number multi will multiply by the same number. So 3 times 3 is 9. Right now, again, you multiply by the same number. Now you have three times nine is 27. So seven will come at its unit space and two will get carry over. And then that's why you get some different digits here. Now, we are only concerned about what comes at units place. Here at the unit space, we have seven. It means that if your number ends in the, ends in the digit three, the perfect cube ends in seven okay let's check for four if your number ends in four that is four is at its units place so you'll, you'll have four here also four times four is what 16 so six at its units place and one will get carry over therefore you'll after adding will get some different digits okay you'll again multiply the same with the same number that is four now this time you have 4 times 6 is 24. That is 4 at its units place and 2 will get carry over. Therefore, you'll add and get different digits. So if your number ends in, here you'll have 4. If your number ends in 4, then the perfect cube will also will end in 4 also. Okay, now let's check for 5. And that's quick. If it's five, then you're surely going to get five only. So if it ends in five, then this is five, this is five. That is at the units place, you have five. So five times five is 25. That is five at its units place to get gets carry over. Now here, you'll again multiply with the same number. This is a different one. That is a product of these two, but it's the same number to this one as this one. So five times five is again 25 to gets carry over and you are left with five at its unit space. It means that 
If your number ends in 5, the perfect cube will also end in 5. Okay, let's check for 6. So if your number ends in if your number ends in 6, so 6 and same number, so 6 times 6 is 36, 3 gets carried over. You multiply with the same number that is 6 here. So 6 times 6 is again 36, 3 gets carried over. Therefore, after adding, you'll get some digits here. It means that if your number ends in 6, then its perfect cube will have 6 at its units place. Now, if your number ends in 7, if your number ends in 7, then here you have 7, here you have 7. So 7 times 7 is 49, that is 9 at its units place, 4 gets carry over, you have here 9 and then you'll multiply this number by the same, like this one, with this, this one. So here you have 7 times 9 is 63, 3 at its units place, 6 gets carry over. It means that if your number ends in 7, then the perfect cube will end in 3. Now let's take if your number ends in 8. So if your number ends in 8, so here you have 8, here you have 8. 8 times 8 is 64, 6 gets carried over. Then again here you'll have the same number. 8 times 4 is 32, 3 gets carried over. It means that if your number ends in 8, then the perfect cube will end in 2. Okay, and last we have 9. So if you take your number ends in 9, so you have 9 here, 9 here, 9 times 9 is 81, 8 gets carried over. We'll again multiply by the same number that is, you will have 9 at its units place. So 9 times 1 is now. 9 and rest of the digits come here. It means that if your number ends in 9, then the perfect cube also ends in 9. So what is the trend? The trend is that except this one and here this one. Okay, so if a number ends in 0, the perfect cube ends in 0. If a number ends in 1, the perfect cube ends in 1. If your number ends in 4, the perfect cube ends in 4. If your number ends in 5, your perfect cube ends in 5. If this is 6, perfect cube ends in 6. If this is, if the number ends in 9, the perfect cube ends in 9. Except these 4. And what's the trend? If your number ends in 2, then the perfect cube ends in 8. And reverse of it, if your number ends in 8, the perfect cube ends in 2. So 2 to 8, 8 to 2, reverse. Similarly, similarly here, if a number ends in 3, the perfect cube ends in 7. And if your number ends in 7, the perfect cube ends in 3. The reverse of this, 3 to 7, 7 to 3. So remember this one, it's very important.